Hey guys, what up? It's your boy the King NYC with you and um I was recently perusing the forums over at shoryuken.com and I came across an article by a member named Artois or Artois. And the title of the article is The Only Problem with Marvel vs. Capcom 3 is You. And uh, basically in this video I'm gonna give my opinions on some of the points being made and stuff in this um in this article. Now I'll probably leave a this link to this a link to the article in my description, but um what I wanted to first say is that the problem with this article that's most apparent is that it arrives at a good conclusion, but that conclusion is based off of untrue facts. The f the evidence that he su gives to support his argument is, you know, fallible. So uh, I will be I'm gonna, I'm gonna be breaking down this uh, article, you know, paragraph by paragraph to see what's going on. Alright, in his first paragraph, he basically says that, you know, in every game, there's a strategy that is high, high reward and low risk. And the reason that the game developers put uh, strategies like these in games is to allow the, pl the, the new player to have, to, you know, to encourage the new player to keep playing the game and not to give up so easily. And to feel like he has a chance to, quote, have a chance against veterans in various games. Now, one thing that's wrong with this that's pretty obvious to me is that new players shouldn't have a one-way, free, easy way to beat veterans. Veterans are veterans for a reason because they put the time and the effort into the game to learn it and to, you know, and to enjoy it and to be competitive at it. When some someone new shouldn't be on the same level as a veteran from five minutes of gameplay, you know. Now, the reason that developers put it in the game isn't because they want people to do this. No, that's what they want you to think. The real reason is that they they wanted a shortcut to some point that you make later in your article, which is making a game that actually has a good you know learning curve and a good ranking system where you can play people that are the same rank as you and whatnot. That's the shortcut to it. The shortcut to it is, hey, you know, why, why, why do we need to, you know, have, you know, a game with good balance in it when we can just throw, you know, a couple strategies that'll make new players feel good. <clears throat> and that's basically the reason why. Now, uh, his, his next couple paragraphs start to talk about uh, StarCraft. And Personally, I've never played StarCraft, so I have no opinion about that, and I will not give an opinion about that. So I cannot, you know, judge what's going on in, in that, in those paragraphs. But um, what I do have opinion about is his, you know, thoughts on the noob tube. And basically, he says that the noob tube was one of these things that the that the developers put in the game to allow, you know, bad players or new players to have an, an like um a, a chance at beating higher level players and he says that the noob tube is called the noob tube because it had it took no skill to use but it had a good payoff and he quote long story short bad players were able to use this and get kills against good players now um first of all your point of the article is that don't call something broken when it's not actually broken because broken means that it breaks the game Noob tubes broke the game, at least for Modern Warfare 2, because in Modern Warfare 2, noob tube, there's no way you can avoid getting noob tubed. A blast shield, which was supposed to be the counter noob tube, was ineffective because a, a blast shield turned a danger close noob tube into a regular noob tube, which is already pretty powerful by itself. Um, let's see. The noob tube was, you know like you said readily available it was <coughs> easy to use and besides all that the noob tube beat guns the point of the game was to use guns the point of the game was to you know use tactics and knowledge and communication and map knowledge and stuff like that to use bullets to, to kill people what other people did either because they lacked the skill to do anything else or because they just wanted to be complete dicks was to use one man army danger close and a third perk with noob tubes on and just spam noob tubes over and over again there's nothing absolutely nothing you can do to stop someone from doing this you if you try to camp you'll get a noob tube 
whether it's random or not. If you try to run around and try to cap flags in domination or try to plant bombs in demolition, you'll have an asshole posted up just throwing noob tubes. And in most games, you can't just take out that asshole and leave him out for life. You know why? Because Modern Warfare 2 had a respawn system on these objective-based games. Now, um, his next paragraph goes on to talk about, um, like, basically, he's posing the question, okay, why would a developer do this? And he basically makes the point, he restates the point that, you know, they do this to give new players a chance against veterans. Once again, why would you do that? Why not give new players, have new players in a pool of their own? Why not let new players do what the veteran players had to do, which was put time and effort into the game to become good? For example, in basketball, new players get schooled by veteran players of basketball. Why? Because new players didn't put in the time, the effort, to become good at basketball. Hence, they are not good at basketball. Soccer is the same thing. Or cooking, for example. A new chef would suck dick compared to a veteran chef. Why? Because the veteran chef has put in the time and the effort to m make his recipes a success. To make each dish of his his own unique product. This is why he is the better chef. This is why he is the veteran chef. So I don't understand why in games that are supposed to be competitive, like IE vi fighting games like Street Fighter and Marvel 3, need to have this like crutch for new players. It doesn't make any sense. The the only reason that this would make sense is like I said before, to just give to just have a shortcut to actually designing a well balanced game. <clears throat> in the next paragraph he goes on to basically talk about what I said, which is, you know, in an ideal world you could design it to have a beautiful curve that seemingly joins leveling up and learning stuff. Like I said, right there, why not go for that ideal world? You know? Like Comp making games isn't like the real world. Making games, you have 100% control over what the game is like. It's not like in the, in, you know, in the real world where you don't have 100% control over what the game is like. No. When you make a game, you have 100% control of what's in the game. You have 100% control of who's in the game, how much damage they do, how much recovery they have, how much moves they have. You have 100% control because you are the computer program. You are the the game program, the game developer, the game designer. You have 100% control. So why not use that control to make a well-balanced game that, you know, leaves, leaves new players to play with each other and then the p new players that actually put in time and effort get to advance to play with intermediate players and those players get to advance to play with advanced players. That's how we should have it. Um... His next couple paragraphs go on to basically talk about some of the, you know, some of the things that a lot of people have been complaining about in Marvel 3. For example, level 3 X-Factor, mashable attacks, spammable rushdowns, cheap characters, Sentinel, all that stuff. The thing that people need to realize is that just because you complain about something doesn't mean that, that you're always getting beat by that something. Some people complain about something because it's outright outrageous to be in a game. Now, I, I know this perfectly because, for example, I'll use an, an example. In Black Ops, the AK-74U beats every single gun in the game. It's the best gun in the game. It gives you the most mobility. It gives you the most power for shot. It gives you the most accuracy. And you got attachments that can make it more accurate and fire more bullets. So there's no reason not to use a 74U. The only reason to not use a 74 is if you were bored of shit out of the 74U. But go and look at any competitive MLG game by those games. Everyone's running with 74 U's. Now, now people aren't complaining because they're getting beat by it. Maybe that's a small portion of it, but the larger portion is what the hell? If everyone's using this gun, that means that this gun has to be the best gun in the game, and it should. There should be something. There should be an incentive to use another gun in the game, and right now there isn't. They go on to talk about the seven stages of grief by Justin Wong. Apparently that's a joke that I don't get because I don't follow. So, he basically sums up his, like, you know, the last portion of his article by saying, you know, don't be so quick to call something broken or cheap, which I, which, which I agree with. You know, don't be so quick to call something broken or cheap. But what I don't agree with is this notion that, you know, 
just because I'm complaining about something means that I'm b getting beat by it and there's nothing I can do around it. Because generally, sometimes, why is it that, you know, you have to work so hard for something while there's someone elder character that just has to mash buttons and get the same result that you do? It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. You know what I mean? Like, for example, I'll give another example. In Black Ops, uh, people use ghosts. Why is it that I have to work so hard and place motion sensors and camp near my motion sensors or, or you know... Let's say you use an eight kill streak like the Blackbird to, to counter ghost when all this cocksucker had to do was just equip ghost. You know what I'm saying? Or for example in Street Fighter Online, why is it that I have to do so much work to try to play the opponent where all the opponent does is just mash random moves um with like a character like Ryu who has good pretty good recovery on most of his moves. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. So um to sum up my point, my point is basically, don't assume that because people complain about something, that's because they're only getting beat by it and that it's not actually a liability to the game. Don't use incorrect examples and try to pass them off as correct examples to prove your argument. Because NoobTubes did break the game in Modern Warfare 2. Ask anyone and they will tell you that. NoobTubes did break the game. And it's been a year and no one actually has found any... It's been more than a year, and there's no one that's actually found the, you know, a, a strategy to beat noob tubes consistently. It all depends on luck and whether so that people are going to use them or not. And luck isn't good enough to get you wins or to get you consistent wins, at least. And finally, don't, uh, don't act like this condescending asshole that knows everything and make articles like this because, you know. A lot of the time, you're going to be having to deal with some of this shit yourself. And I'd like to see you <laughs> not bitch about it, too. Because, you know, you're the ultimate master that understands everything. So, anyway, that was just my response to the article. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know it was a bit long, but I had to, but I had a lot to say. I had a lot to get off my chest because this article did kind of piss me off. Because it's just another example of one of these condescending-ass players that think, you know... Oh, you know, let's just deal with it and stay quiet. No, if we had to deal with it and stay quiet, you know, games wouldn't evolve. Give, games wouldn't change, you know? Anyways, like I said, it's been your boy the king. Peace out.